Hi, this is Dr. Mercola, and today I want to talk to you about an important topic about keeping your joints moving freely throughout your lifetime. And why is this an issue? Well, because millions of people have problems with it. In fact, about 80% of adults uh, admit to having some problems with their joints throughout their lifetime, and that's a lot of people. So uh, when you have this dysfunction, it stops and prevents you from partic properly participating in exercise, which is an essential component of health, of course, and really enjoying life like you were designed to. So I want to review some of the strategies that you can implement to optimize your joint health. And interestingly, one of the most important ones is exercise. So it gets to be a vicious cycle because if you have joint uh, dysfunction, that is going to limit your ability to uh, exercise. But that actually contributes to one of the primary myths out there that exercise can actually contribute to joint uh, impairment. And it, although it, there are circumstances where it can, and specifically if you have an injury such as an accident or you have some structural dysfunction, if you participate in a chronic repetitive uh, exercise like running, it can lead to a problem. But if you're stable and you have no history of accidents, then you can exercise for decades without any problems. And I'm a, I'm a classic example. I started running in 1968 and ran for 42 years before I stopped and switched to more high intensity, different type of program. But I had, n in those 42 years, I had no problems at all with my knees at all. Nothing. Never had a problem. So uh, I'm, a, I'm an example that, you know, that th it doesn't necessarily impair your joint dysfunction because it does a, actually does a lot of great things for your body, primarily by reduce, radically reducing the inflammatory response. So definitely exercise. You've got to get into a program. I've done a lot of this. Uh, teaching of this on the site, so if you haven't looked at that, please look at that because it's really crucial. And then the other component of ex which exercise is an essential ingredient is optimizing your weight because uh, for a number of reasons. One is that when you have extra weight, that will tend to push the inflammatory conditions of your body towards more inflammation. So it will increase prostaglandins and leukotrienes and at least the inflammatory leuk leukotrienes and prostaglandins and, and cause the inflammation response to go up. So definitely optimizing your weight. And the other thing is from a pure mechanical component, it can increase compressive forces on your knees so that for every pound or kilogram of extra weight, you're going to put about four pounds or kilograms of force on your knees. So it's another. So you've got mechanical and biochemical reasons for optimizing your weight. And clearly the other, th other element that will push inflammation rapidly is sugar. And uh, a byproduct or a, a corollary of that would be grains for most people. If you have high insulin response, responses such as diabetes, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, high, uh, then you clearly want to limit your grains. But most everyone should, should have as little sugar as possible because sugar will invariably push your body's health in the wrong direction and certainly will uh, increase the problems with your joints. Now one that many of us tend not to think of is vitamin D. And in the winter, it becomes a increasing challenge to expose our skin to enough uh, ultraviolet B radiation to make vitamin D. So the options would be to, and even in the summer is a problem for many people because they work and they're not outside exposing enough of their skin to the sun. So the options would be a safe tanning bed or taking oral vitamin D. And most adults are going to need about anywhere from four to 6,000 as an average, and many need up to 10,000 units a day. So you need a significant amount if you're going to get therapeutic levels of vitamin D. Additionally, you want to have omega-3 fats, specifically animal-based. Now, plant-based are phenomenal, and I believe everyone should have some, but the conversion of DHA and EPA isn't as high as it can be in many people. That's why you're thinking, I believe you need a high-quality animal source, and my favorite recommendation, of course, is krill. Now, therapeutically, in addition to the lifestyle changes I just recommended, you can implement some other components. One would be acupuncture. And, and while I'm thinking of acupuncture, you could also use some of the Asian types of exercises, which would be yoga or tai chi or qigong, which can be particularly useful for the joints. And therapeutically, there is a type of energy psychology technique called EFT, emotional freedom technique, which can address the stresses that sometimes lead to uh, joint dysfunctions and, and it can be dramatically effective. And if you're interested more about that, you can just search my site for more details. But let me also mention the things that you need to avoid because it's not so much necessarily what you're doing, but what you don't do that's important. So the things that you need to avoid from, a, from an intervention perspective would be the drugs. Now, the primary drugs that are used to treat this would be what's called the NSAIDs, or the non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. And these are broken down into prescription ones and over-the-counter ones. And nearly 
all the over-the-counter ones were at one-time prescriptions. The most common one, of course, being ibuprofen, which came, I believe, in the 70s as Motrin. So they all have potential complications, and although they may be useful initially and, and, and reasonable to, to use for a very short time, if you use them for a long term, they will absolutely increase your risk for liver or kidney disease. And believe me, a renal dialysis or a kidney transplant is not fun. Uh, but additionally, they can kill you. You're going to wonder, how can they kill you? Well, 30,000 people a year in the United States alone die from bleeding ulcers from taking NSAIDs. So these drugs are not without dangers. And then, of course, uh, people are always interested in a quick, rapid solution, so it's, it's not uncommon for many people to, to uh, seek a surgical solution. I definitely would strongly encourage you to stay away from that as, as long as you can use it as an absolute last resort because surgery is irreversible. Uh, it is just, you cannot go back once you've had surgery. Now, a number of people are also using uh, supplements that, that, that can to, to seek to provide some relief, and the most common ones are glucosamine and chondroitin sulfates. And I'm not a big fan of those for a number of reasons. One is that I've never really seen a lot of good benefits from people taking them. And additionally, they're typically extracted from shellfish, so if you have a shellfish allergy, it'll be a problem. And they can be, uh, they're large pills, so they're a bit of a challenge to swallow, and it can lead to unnecessary salt burden. So uh, if you're looking for something, our team came up with a comprehensive alternative that has four ingredients. The first one ingredient is called Bioflex, which is an eggshell membrane that is uh, really profoundly helpful to, uh, to support the stability and flexibility of your joints. And uh, it, it's really uh, received uh, a lot of good press in the, uh, the studies that have come out to, to support its use from that perspective. Uh, additionally, we also use uh, one of the most potent antioxidants I'm aware of, which is astaxanthin, and you might have heard me talk about that before. But it's a carotenoid uh, extracted from marine algae, and uh, it's not only useful to uh, help inflammation, support inflammation, but it's uh, particularly useful for a variety of other conditions, where any place where, where oxidation is occurring. So I, I believe it's one of the most beneficial antioxidants that you can use. Now, thirdly, we have an herb that's been used for centuries. It's called Boswellia, and it's in, been used in Ayurvedic medicine. And it's, just, it's primarily used to support proper inflammatory responses. And the research also suggests that it may uh, strongly support a biochemical cartilage structure. So two great reasons to consider using it. And then lastly, we have something called hyaluronic acid. A hyaluronic acid is a, a, a very significant component of the synovial fluid. And the synovial fluid is the, the fluid in your joint that helps lubricate them and make them function and, and glide smoothly and freely without pain. And the hyaluronic acid actually supports collagen production and, and, and also, like the Boswellia, healthy inflammatory response. So these are tools. I mean, this, this supplement that has these four components as a tool that you can use in conjunction with the lifestyle approaches I recommend. Because remember, there is no magic supplement for joint support because it really is done in conjunction with a comprehensive st strategy to optimize your body's inflammatory responses and to get your body working the way it was designed to. So once, once you do this, hopefully you can be, a comp the, will be one of the 80% of, of the population that seems to have some challenges with the joints, and this will get you moving in the right direction. So hopefully it's been helpful. You know, is it, is our, our mission here is to provide you with the resources, the tools that will um, non-toxically and inexpensively seek to support your health and help you and your family fully take control of your health.